What's up guys and welcome to the third video in my Programming Connect 4 in Python series. In this video we're actually going to implement the graphics for our game. So at the end of the last video we had something that looked like this. It was a fully functional command line based Connect 4 game. So we're going to take this game and we're going to expand on it to actually make it look nice. So the first thing we're going to do to do that is import a library called Pygame. And just like the NumPy library, if you don't have Pygame installed, just open up a new terminal window and type in pip install Pygame. As you can see, I already have it. Cool. All right, and now what we're going to do is we're going to have to start out by initializing Pygame. So this you have to do in any Pygame project. So before our game loop starts, we're going to do pygame.init. Okay. And then what we're going to have to do is define our screen size. How big do we want our game to be? So if I real quick just build the finished version I have, you can see that, you know, it's pretty, you know, you can kind of break this game down into squares, I would say. You have squares that represent each column and each row. And then I had this one extra row at the top. So we're going to define each one of those squares as a hundred pixels so the sizes we're going to talk about right now are all in pixels so the square size is going to be a hundred pixels and then our width for our screen is going to be the number of columns so the column count times the square size cool and the height is going to be the row count times the square size and actually if you saw my the game I just dragged in I'll drag it in one more time I actually added one additional row because I wanted this spot where I could display this circle that I'm dropping. So we'll actually make this row count plus one times square size for the height. And that will be packaged together nicely in a variable called size, which will be a tuple of width comma height. And then to get Pygame to actually read that, we need to type in the following screen equals pygame.display.setMode and then we'll have it read in the size. And if you're wondering where I'm kind of just magically getting these functions from, I'm looking at the documentation on the Pygame site. So if you go to pygame.org slash docs, you can find all the kind of functions that I'm using. I'll post a link to that in the description. And we're going to real quick test to see our screen is actually working. So you can just run control B. And as you can see, the window popped up and then it disappeared. We'll handle why it's disappearing in a second. So it looked like though it is reading in that screen. Cool. So let's now create a function called, we're going to do a couple things. So I think first we'll define a function called draw board. And this will just be like print board that we defined up here. But now we're actually going to draw it with the pie game graphics. So draw board is going to have to take in the board. And that's about it. And I'll actually pass this for now because we're going to make some changes to our loop before we do this draw board. So the first major change we're going to have to do to our loop is Pygame is an event-based game library. So Pygame kind of works and allows you to function in the game by just reading all of your movements of your, you know, the keys you press, the mouse buttons you click, the mouse, like how you move your mouse. It reads those all in as individual events. So that looks like something like this. So for event in pygame.event.get, and as I just said, events are like mouse motion, mouse button down, key down, etc. So we're going to read in, we're going to drop a piece by clicking down. So that's one of the important events we'll have to get. So we're going to first do, just kind of follow me on this one, event type, if event type equals equals pygame.quit. So this is just something you want to handle in all of your games that you make. Just allowing your game to properly exit out if you click the button here in the top right that X out, X's out of it. So if that happens, we have to do a system exit just so it properly shuts down. 
And to get this sys right here, we're going to have to import that into our project as well. That means system. And that comes default in any Python installation. OK, system exit. Now to get to the more interesting stuff, the event that we really are going to care about to start is um, mouse button down. So if event.type equals equals pygame.mouse button down. And all of the different events you can also find on the pygame website under the docs. The game is going to run by us clicking down on a specific spot on the screen where we want to drop the piece. So instead of reading in the column we want to drop it in, as we did previously, now this column is going to be populated by where we click. So I'm going to real quick put all of this, all of this behavior into this mouse button down event type because now the events of us dropping the piece always happen when we click the mouse button down. So we don't want it to happen otherwise. We don't want it to be asking for this input. All right, so column equals, and this is going to be where we click on the screen. So just for now, I'm going to just kind of comment out this stuff just so it doesn't run on us while we're testing. Control. And let's just real quick see if this fixed our error of the screen disappearing right when it pops up. Uh, what happened? And as you can see, now we have this screen and it's not, you know, it's staying here. So that's because we actually added in this event loop here. It knows to kind of continue while these events are happening. And the exit out will be handled properly by this, the system exit. Cool. All right, so we have our screen looking pretty good, but doesn't have any graphics, obviously. Um, So we're going to implement the draw board function now. So if we think about it, I'll drag in the finished one I have again. We're going to draw some sort of rectangle for each of these slots and then a black circle inside those rectangles. And then we'll have to draw this afterwards, this piece that we drop. And then whenever we do drop a piece, the, the one or two that's in our command line based game will become like a red circle or a yellow circle based on what we're doing. So let's uh, implement this. So first we're going to iterate through kind of every spot in our board. So for R or for we'll say C in range column count and then we'll do the same thing for R in range row count just as we did above here when we we're iterating through all the the spots well we need to initially just draw it as like an open you know a, a blue blue rectangle and then in that blue rectangle we want a black circle so we're going to do a pygame.draw function so first we're going to draw a blue rectangle um so that looks like kind of our game board. And then the black circle inside of that will be the open slot. So we're going to draw that on the screen. And I'm going to drag in again the, the, li the, the library so I can see exactly what I'm doing. So as you can see here, pygame.draw rect. We need to take in the surface, the color, the rectangle we want to draw, and then the width. So the screen is the surface we want to draw it on. The color is, we want a blue color. So I'm going to define blue as a global variable, a global static variable up above. And this is going to be an RGB value. So we're going to say it's 0, 0, comma 200. And that means, or 255 or so. So that's going to be a very blue um, RGB value because this means red, this means green, and this means blue. And the only color that uh, actually has some value is the blue here. So the color we're going to say is blue. We just defined that, that's the RGB value. Now we need to find our rectangle. So our rectangle is going to be, the, you need to have four different things to define your rectangle. You need to have the size of the width and height, 
and then also the position. So the position is going to be, this might be take a little playing around with to get this, but it's going to be C times, so these are numbers, 0 to you know the column count and 0 to the row count. This is going to be C times square size, because we want the actual, this is the top left corner of it, and that's going to the, And then our position on the y-axis is going to be r times the square size. And our height and width are going to be the other two parameters of this uh, what, that make up a rectangle object. And that's just going to be, it's going to be a square. So it's square size, square size, height and width are the same. And the width op uh, argument that I showed was in the documentation. As you can see, it's defined as zero, so that's optional. And think that's just the uh, outline, like uh, the, the line that surrounds the square. So we don't need to implement that. All right, let's test to see if just these rectangles draw properly. So down here, we'll just do a draw board, taking the board um, as we did here. And then what we have to do whenever we want to update our display is do pygame.display.update. And that will make sure that we actually see what we're supposed to see. So we'll build that real quick. Oh, and as you can see, we have this just giant mound of blue. And the one problem I see right now is it's not actually opening up the... I wanted the top to be open so we could have a piece that uh, swings around it so it shows us where we're dropping it. So I think the problem with that is because our axis starts at 0, 0. We actually need to, to shift down by one square size to kind of account for that offset that we left for that space. So we're going to have to add a square size here. Now I build this again. And as you can see, it looks proper. Now we'll need to fill in some circles to represent the, the slots. So we'll do that by drawing a circle in Pygame. And that's also in the documentation. So we'll do pygame.draw.circle. And that's going to take in the surface of a screen. And now we need a, a color. So I think a good color would be just black. So we'll define black up above too. And black in RGB is just zero everything. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, so this is black. And then let's drag in the documentation real quick to see how we're gonna finish off this circle. So circle, circle, circle. Okay, position and then radius. So this is gonna be the position of the center of the circle as you see in the documentation. And the radius will probably want to be a little bit smaller than our square size, just so there's, um, the circles aren't touching. So let's define a radius too. So our radius is going to be, we'll define that under the width and height and whatnot. So our radius is going to be a little bit less than the square size. So we'll do, I'm gonna make this, also they have to be integer values I believe. So once we start getting into division, it might get a little bit messy. So it's gonna be int square size divided by two because it needs to be, the radius is half the diameter and the diameter would be the full square size. And then we'll just minus an arbitrary like integer value off of that. So now we can draw our circle with that radius. But we'll have to do the position first. So the position, where is it? I forget, oh, it's in drop board. The position's gonna be, so if this is the top left of the rectangle, our position for the center of the circle is going to have to be that, then with some offset. So square size, then r times square size plus square size and the offset is going to have to be like half of it because we're talking about the radius. So half of the rectangle is going to be adding an additional square size divided by two. Adding a square size divided by two. All right, let's see what happens now. Oh, and then actually we're gonna have to do the, actually specify the radius. So the radius is what we defined just a second ago. Build. What happened? Uh, yeah, integer argument expected. 
Okay, so it looks like this division caused us to have some floats in our code, so we're gonna have to actually make this int. Yeah, Pygame it seems like only accepts integers, so make sure that everything you, every position and radius value, you make a integer. Come on, baby, let's go. Cool, yay, we got a board. All right, I think that's where we're gonna end this video. We'll actually animate the dropping of the pieces and then the kind of the piecing ho hovering over here and the text saying you won in the next video. All right, see you in a bit.